Let's start today's discussion with an interesting update from OCBC. You know, recently they had that fishing loss scandal. And this estimated amount was 8.5 million at the start. But right now, OCBC has mentioned that they have lost in total closer to $13.7 million. And with that, I've actually came across a very interesting comment by Professor Kelvin, who is in the Faculty of Law of NUS. He mentions that bank transfers are not really transfers of property. Just like, you know, we sell house, there's a transfer of property deed. But it's really engaging the law of agency, whereby one value is transferred from one person and non-simultaneously created in another person. So at common law, debits of a customer account are only permitted if they are authorized, which would not have been if there was a fraud, however convincing the fraudster is. He goes on to mention further that online banking has generated huge savings for banks. They have saved on rent, they have saved on salaries that physical branches would demand. However, most of benefits have accrued only to banks who are better positioned to prevent such frauds and absorb losses as part of their operating costs. And all the risk now lies with customers like you and I, in particular elderly who are unable to identify such fraud and cannot withstand such losses. I think that's a great comment and a good learning point also. I didn't realize that banks may actually have that obligation to take on that loss. All along, I assume that you know you and I, we as users, the bank account is ours, the money is ours, we have to take care of it. I didn't realize that legally, the bank is just an agent that transfers money on our behalf. And if the money was transferred without our authority, there is actually certain responsibility that they bear. And I've always wondered, what good reason is there to keep so much money in the bank accounts? You might as well park into Singapore savings bonds, at least it's giving you some interest. Or park it to CPF, whereby you, know, you can nominate beneficiaries and stuff. Or even just buy a property. A lot of Singaporeans stash money in properties. At least it cannot be moved away so easily. And that's why today's question comes about on properties. This is by Yip KF 18 Hi Josh, I understand from a past video that you mentioned, you have a HDB and also a condo. Will you cash out on any of these properties in the near future or will you continue to rent it out? Now this is a very personal question and everything is fluid in any case, but I can share with you my train of thought. Because I do long-term planning, I communicate long-term with my family, my wife. And in my opinion, it seems a matter of time before I sell off the HDB flat. Why so? You know, government has actually raised ABSD from 12% to 17%. I previously paid ABSD of 7%. That was 2017, if I'm not wrong. And what is become clear to me is that when government has inched up ABSD, they wouldn't suddenly say, oh, zero ABSD the next time. They would likely reverse it down, right? 17%, now back to 12%, and then back to 7%, and then back to zero. Eventually, if property markets are flat, and uh, non publish but that could take years which means i misinterpreted i thought last time seven percent was a temporary measure of absd that's why i paid it i bought a condo and then when it inched up i just held back now the problem is for it to go back to zero i think that's very unlikely so my best bet is i'll probably dispose of the hb at some point in time in future no hurry because if you see this chart over here you realize that the price for my HDB flat has been declining quite a bit, correct, over the years. Only a recent transaction has it sprouted up to a higher level. So thank goodness one neighbor uh, done the right thing, sell at a good price. You know, for properties, the price you can fetch is largely determined by latest transactions. And if your neighbor is undercutting or sold off their flat at a super cheap price, uh, sooner or later, it's going to affect the sentiment of your house also because the prospective buyer is looking at the last transaction data also. So thankfully, somebody has uh, given a good fair value. Uh, it's certainly closer to my purchasing price. And what I can say is if there's a loss, then there's no urgency to sell. I was previously concerned about the decaying list because it seems to look like when it was impacting my HDB flat, which is pretty old. But with this high transaction, I think that is light at the end of the tunnel so hopefully prices for the hdb flat will inch up if it does inch up i'm open to selling it if not i'll just collect rent and what i'll be thinking of is if it's disposed i can share with you 10 year roadmap just a wild shot if it's disposed 
and markets are cool again back in 2016 2017 and i see the right situation that's where i'll execute another property purchase the capital part is the hard part to build uh, i'm focused on that i'm not too worried about uh, selling it quickly and flipping it for profit uh, that's not the game property is always a long game so what i'm thinking of is if i dispose it and the right market conditions then i'll enter back in 2017 i saw on block wave picking up already that's why i made the decision then very quickly to execute for this private property that i'm staying in right now it was a good decision i looked at the trend correctly hopefully i repeat that process and uh, catch the next wave up accurately but as of now things are pretty expensive and as i've shared on this channel also and uh, through this podcast i believe that government might more likely than not step up even more cooling measures if we don't get results of a flattening property price curve so with that answered let me invite you again to leave your questions below or if you have something you want me to address with a full podcast send a soundbite to my email address it will be joshtantap at gmail.com i'll pick it up i'll do a talk show for it and give you a very deep dive on things especially if you are able to share a bit more depth to your case study so as always check out the links in the comments below and i'll sign up from this podcast have a good day take care and goodbye, goodbye.